I think that'll, yeah, look at that. God damn it, it's, uh, it's recording now. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, it was. The year was 1971 or 72, and we were sitting in Mr. Toomey's chemistry class in Boonton High School, and a row or so across from me was uh, Peter Onorati, who later went on to become a kind of famous actor, maybe, could have been, I don't know. Anyway, Mr. Toomey would come out of his, he had like a back office, he'd come out the door about 10 minutes after class started. I guess he just had to get himself psyched up to deal with us people, and he'd come out and get a, pick up a piece of chalk and start writing things on on the chalkboard, and, uh, you know, he'd uh, be writing things on there, like something like that, uh, whatever it is. Uh, uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and he'd keep going, one mole, one mole. Remember this, kids, remember this. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, that's one mole, one mole. And he'd constantly be going raving like this. The man was completely insane. He was completely insane, I tell you. But anyway, Peter Honorati, or Pete as we called him then, used to always get one of those little wash bottles, those little squeeze, like half liter squeeze bottles with little nozzles sticking up out of the top. And when Tommy Toomey was chalking on the board, he would start from the left hand side and to start spraying, and the whole class would just hold their breath until it splattered across Toomey's head, and Pete would throw the, the bottle back underneath the seat of his desk, and no one no one saw a thing. No one knew what was going on. Toomey would either spin around and stare at the whole class looking for a guilty face, or just keep on going. You know. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. One mole, one mole, he would shout. <laughs> you know, it was like, there were there were days where there were days where somebody would somebody would uh, turn on one of the gas jets back back in the lab behind the where the seats were and uh, just throw a match after about ten minutes of class and boom, you know, and like a big fireball and light the light the burner on fire. <laughs> I mean, this is this is serious stuff we did in 1971-72 in science class. It's just, it's just insane. Insane, I tell you. But anyway, we took it all as a good joke, and uh, there were there were times when there were some chemical mixtures that just didn't go off well and caught fire and shit. But one day, one day, we decided that since this turkey just kept kept hollering on about things and. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. One mole, you know, was his, one of his mantras. And then he was telling us about, uh, telling us about uh, ampers or something. Amps? Hmm, I'm confused. No, uh, it wasn't amps. It was uh, shit. Shit, 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 shit. I have to pause this thing here for a moment and figure out what it was. What was it? Coulombs. Coulombs. That's what it was. It was Coulombs. And he kept making his jokes about uh, Andre Coulomb and his wife, Millie Coulomb. So we had, uh, we had figured out about this point, and it was like, okay, let's, uh, let's really have some fun with this. So we went up into the, uh, on the second floor in the old part of the high school, at the very, very front, was a teacher's lounge where they sat around drinking sherry and smoking cigarettes and in between classes <laughs> trying to deal with us little bastards. And uh, we walked in there and grabbed a mimeograph sheet. Now, I don't know, a lot of the younger viewers here might know or might not know what a mimeograph sheet is. It's a uh, it was called spirit duplicating, and it has nothing to do with ghosts or anything like that. It was a, it was a process where you would use a, a pen or whatever to write on a, a wax sheet of paper, and it would take, like, carbon ink or whatever and transfer it off onto a, a mid-bit mid, mid form, and then you'd put it in this machine and crank it around, and each time it cranked around, some 
uh, spirit or solvent would uh, wet that thing, and then when it hit a piece of paper, it would make a duplicate of the thing. You could make about 50 copies out of one one sheet, and then they started getting very faded and blank. But anyway, we, we grabbed one of these sheets. We made up this whole thing about uh, Kaloom Day, and uh, looked up in, in an encyclopedia in the library and found out when Augusta Kaloom's birthday was. So we, we did this whole thing, and uh, we had we had it all worked out there. There was going to be a parade down Maple Street, and then a big old bonfire on the on the baseball field that night, and parade and all sorts of crap going on. And we cranked out about fifty sheets of this stuff, and stole a few rolls of Scotch tape from the art department. And uh, I had about six or eight uh, compadres that uh, were in on this, and. In between class changes, we, we had passed these things out and then uh, had run down the hallways, ripping off pieces of tape and sticking them on everybody's lockers on the first and second floor of the school. And this was just after lunchtime or something like that, or maybe during lunchtime. And shortly thereafter, in classes, you could hear this whispering. It's like, oh, there's going to be a, there's going to be an event today. Oh, a parade down Maple Street past the school. And tonight, a big old bonfire and a celebration of Augusta Colum. And 99% of the people in the school had no fucking idea who Augusta Colum was anyway. But hey, a parade and a bonfire, you know, that's like, that's, that's like the cheerleader squad was going to be out there. And it was a pep rally and all that stuff. So anyway, we, we, we ran around and stuck these things on everybody's lockers. And by the end of the day, the... The fever pitch was up, and uh, everyone everyone was ready for the Augusta Kaloom parade and birthday celebration and everything else. And then nothing happened. <laughs> and then nothing happened. And and you know the funny thing is, we we never got in trouble for it, even though all the all the teachers knew who had been in that. Uh, that teacher's lounge where the mimeograph machine was that afternoon. I guess they all found it pretty funny. Professor Toomey, later on and later in the year, uh, my fellow classmates in, uh, elected me to be teacher of the day. I remember when you know, the teacher of the day thing, so, you know, so, so I had gotten uh, a whole mess of old 1934 uh, commencement films or something out of the library good old black and white 16 millimeter films got a projector in the room and uh we're sitting there in the class and it's like 15 minutes after the bell tommy toomey has not emerged from his office yet all of a sudden the door creaks open here he comes out he's got like a plastic uh apron on and a thing of those, you know, those little balls and sticks and stuff that you make the molecules out of, on his head, climbs a chair, gets on top of the lab table at the front of the room, and does a little dance and says, holy crap, I knew this day was coming. <laughs> so we, we played all these stupid uh, films of the maypole dances and the graduating class in 1934 and stuff and uh yeah that was that was quite some day another another time uh we grabbed his student plan book you know our teacher's plan book and we were looking through the thing because it was laying up on the lab table before he emerged from his hiding place and he had the only thing in there was uh, plans for his cabin in Pennsylvania, how many square feet of carpet he needed, <laughs> how much roofing he needed for it. Poor man, he was driven to distraction by us. Anyway, that was 1971-72 and uh, my high school chemistry class. <laughs>